The Gospel of John chapter 9, it says this. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him saying, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither. This man nor his parents sinned. But that the works of God should be revealed in him. Oh, hallelujah. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Verse 10. Therefore they said to him, how were your eyes opened? He answered and said, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received sight. Then they said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought him who formerly was blind to the Pharisees. Now it was the Sabbath when Jesus made clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also asked him again and said how he received his sight. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I see. Give God praise for his word. I want you to then go to the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms chapter 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, everyone say trouble. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now, everyone say now. My head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Give God praise for his mighty word. Out of a dark moment. See, what made Jesus the Messiah was not just the miracles. It wasn't just hanging on the cross. The great moment was when they rolled the stone over the tomb. Because if Jesus would have stayed in that tomb, he could not be the Messiah. And out of the darkness of that tomb, Jesus was about to birth the church of Jesus Christ. He was about to be the lamb that was slain, but now is alive forevermore. He was in that season that he was about to take the keys of death and hell and the grave. And he was about to arise as victorious, as king of kings and lord of lords out of a dark season. See, I'm, I'm preaching to somebody right now that God wants to give you fresh vision. God is speaking to some people right now that you're settling. But God doesn't want you to settle. He wants you to dream again. And I'm telling you right now, in Jesus' name, with the boldness of the Holy Spirit, the enemy locked down the nations, but now the nations are opening and he has to pay. He's going to pay deeply. He's going to pay. There's going to be a greater harvest than ever before because what the devil meant for evil, God is about to turn it around for the glory of his name. Jesus 
comes to the blind man. This man who was blind, he was in a dark season, a dark moment. That's all he'd ever known. And I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but maybe you've had a cloud of depression and oppression in your life for years. Jesus comes to the blind man. And the disciples say to Jesus, whose fault is it that he's blind? One of, my, one of the things that breaks my heart in this season is how the church has been so divided when we should be in unity like never before. This is the hour right now. This is the hour where Jesus said, be awakened, be watchful, look up. And we played the blame game. Oh God, Lord, do a work in our hearts. The disciples are looking for reason for the blindness. And Jesus said, stop playing the blame game. The reason why he's here, right here, right now, is that he was made to manifest my glory. In other words, his life was marked for this moment. And you're about to see me make... Oh. See, I'm trying to preach to somebody on a Saturday night in faith assembly that whatever you've been through, whatever trial, it may feel like you don't know what even's going to happen right now, let alone tomorrow. You feel like you're in a dark season, but I'm telling you in Jesus' name, your life has been marked by the blood of the Lamb, and that means He's going to manifest His glory in your life. If you believe it, give God a mighty shout of praise. Jesus spits in the ground. He makes clay and he puts it in the man's eyes. Have you ever prayed to God for a breakthrough and his answer seems to make the situation worse? That God uses something you never planned that he could use. And you say, God, don't go there. That's going to make it worse. And God says, no, that's what I'm going to use to get your breakthrough. That's what I'm going to use to let the light of my glory shine right into the midst of that situation. See, not only is he blind, he's now got mud in his eye. And if the mud was supposed to heal him, how could the man see through the mud that was in his eyes? And not only does the mud stop him from actually seeing if he could see, Jesus then says, go. Go. He didn't even ask for a miracle. He was just sat minding his own business. Jesus spits in the ground, puts mud in his eye, and now says, go. Go to the pool of Siloam. Go to the place that is called Sent. See, there is many times the enemy will paralyze you. He'll paralyze you in a dark season. And yet Jesus now says to the blind man, if you want a miracle, if you want this miracle, you don't, don't worry about the mud in your eye. Don't worry about the spit in your eye. Just obey the word. Go still while you're blind. Oh, I'm trying to preach to somebody right now. I'm trying to preach to somebody right now. He said, go while you're still blind. In other words, you might not see your miracle yet, but you got to keep on moving. That's why Jesus said, walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. You see, I'm preaching to people right now that this is the moment, whether you can see in the natural or not, you got to start stepping in to the breakthrough. you got to start stepping in to the ministry, to the call, to the destiny that God has for you. God, I want to do this for your kingdom, but I don't have the money. Go! Yeah, but God, it's dark. Go! Move! Walk! Believe! Press in! 
praise, worship, declare, prophesy. Yeah, but God, I don't know. Lord, you're my light, but I can't see. And Jesus said, I'm trying to take you to the next level. Because we don't walk by sight. We walk by Those videos that you see on that screen, I know it looks like a nice little movie presentation, but I could tell you the times where all hell was let loose. I could tell you times that I should have died right in those seals. I could tell you times when I went in there saying, God, I don't know how we're going to do this, but Lord, I feel like you put money in my eye, but I go, I'm obeying the word. You said go, so I'm going to go. Lord, you are my light. Go while you're still hurting. Go while you're still rejected. Go without validation. Go without men's praise. Move. Walk while you have the light. We're in a dark season. The world is saying now across the nations that we're going to build back better. They ain't going to build nothing. But the Bible says, Jesus declared, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the kingdom of our God. And I'm trying to preach to somebody right now. You may feel like you're stumbling. You may feel like the blind man. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the blind man that was known in that region? Suddenly one day they see him stumbling down the street. Not only is he blind, but he's got mud in both eyes. But you see, men and women of God that have done greatness for the kingdom. There were times that people looked at them and said, look at them with mud in their eye. But you see, that's why tonight God's going to give you revelation. That God is calling you to a new place of authority, to a deeper realm of his glory. I said to a deeper realm of his glory. I said to a deeper realm of his glory. David said, the Lord is my light. He was David that declared a revelation not only to his people and generation, but to generations to come. For the book of Acts said that God would restore the tabernacle of David, which means the dwelling, the habitation, the home. In other words, there would come through the blood and the power of the Holy Spirit that no longer would God fill buildings. He would fill his temple. And that's you and that's me. Glory be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. That's why Jesus said, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. He said, walk while you have the light. He didn't say, pause, settle down, get comfortable, there's a pandemic. He said, no, get up, keep walking, keep pressing in, keep declaring. No matter what, in this day, we got to have a revelation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I'm tired of a woke generation that say they've been awoken. No, they're stumbling around in the dark. We need the church of Jesus Christ to rise up in this hour. I, I'm not talking about what we should do. I'm saying right here, right now, even tonight, we need the Holy Spirit to fill this place, to come down in a mighty way that God could open our eyes to what he's doing in this hour. I saw something. In the book of Genesis, are you with me tonight? In the book of Genesis chapter 1, we know that scripture. It says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. Did you notice that's the first thing he said? The first thing God declared, let there be light. And the Bible says there was light because his word cannot return to him void. 
the Holy Spirit was hovering, waiting for the word. Oh. <laughs> I've seen the power of when the word is preached and the Holy Spirit takes that word and begins to set the captive free. Oh, hallelujah. I've seen God recreate eyeballs in front of me. Recreate an eyeball. I've seen God literally grow a leg over seven inches just before my eyes. I've seen people that were lame from birth, blind from birth, deaf from birth, be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, if you don't believe in miracles, don't come near me. I'm too far gone. I've seen too much. My God is a miracle working. God, he is my my light and my salvation. In the midst of a darkness, watch this. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning with the first day. But in verse 16, whoo, I'm preaching to myself right now. I just had a little moment right there. Is that okay? Some of you can smile, you know, we're in the presence of the Lord. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. God creates the sun and the moon. Verse 19. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Well, there's a blank look on. Okay. Did you get it? Did I not just read to you that God said, let there be light, and he said this was the first day? Then didn't I just read to you that God made the sun and the moon, and this he called the fourth day? He made the sun to give light in the natural realm, and that was the fourth day, right? You read scripture. I want to ask you a question. If there was light on the first day, but he didn't make the sun and the moon till the fourth day, that means for three days. Three days, there was no sun. Three days, there was no moon, but there was still light. That means for three days, the light of his glory illuminated all of creation. The light of his glory, it was like God was introducing himself to say, listen, I'm going to make the sun, but the light of the world is my glory. It is my son. He is the light of the world. Give God a mighty shout of praise. For those of you that are theologians and you're saying, mm, yeah, okay, I got proof. <laughs> Revelation 21, 23 says, this is the new Jerusalem. This is when the Lamb of God returns as King of kings and Lord of lords. Revelation 21, 23 says, the city had no need of sun or moon to shine in it. For the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. Give God a mighty shout of praise. I want to tell you right now, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Can I tell you that light is still shining right now in this room? For those that are hungry, that glory is still shining right now in this place. For those that will say, Lord, I want to see like I've never seen before. Lord, while the world are in darkness, Lord, I want to step in to what you have for my family. Lord, I declare tonight, you are my light and my salvation. You are the light. You see... The Bible says in the book of Psalms that the, the word of God, the entrance of the word of God brings light. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of the three-point sermons. 
That's why I thank God for leaders such as this that are open to let the Holy Spirit come and do something fresh and something new and something real in our lives. You see, we don't need three-point sermons and PowerPoint presentations. We need men and women of God that have been in the glory, that have been in the presence, that when they come out, they've got a word in their mouth for a generation. They've got a word that will break the stranglehold of the enemy. Can you say amen? See, that's why Paul said in Ephesians that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that the eyes of your understanding, that means that it's not just, you know, you see, there are a lot of people with head knowledge, but in this hour, we need people of revelation, that the word is not just in their head, it's in their spirit, and it's alive and sharper than a two-edged sword. See, I'm preaching to somebody right now that you wake up and you feel like there's no hope. You wake up and that thing has gripped you like you can't even breathe. But tonight, I'm telling you in Jesus' name, the light of his glory is going to break that thing off of your life. I said the light of his glory is going to set the captive free in this place tonight. Do you believe it? Say amen. I'm 42 years old. Pastor would say I'm a young whippersnapper, but I feel old. I look at some of these young guys and they're preaching to thousands around the world. and They're in their 20s. And I realize that God is accelerating. He's increasing. This is happening quicker than at any time before. Because that we're in the last minute of the last seconds of the last hour. And you see, there has to be an acceleration. And I'm telling you, people, men and women of God, God is going to use you in these days. But you've got to get a fresh revelation of who he is. You've got to step in to that realm of his glory where he changes you and he touches you afresh. And I don't care, every single preacher, every single evangelist, if we get so proud, we'll step out. But we've got to stay hungry and stay humble and say, Lord, we want more. You were singing it tonight. Lord, we want more more I want to ask you a question do you truly truly want more of him the Lord is my light see if we if we brought you in this room tonight and all the lights were off and you couldn't see anything in this room and we led you into the room and we said, now open your eyes and you open them and all you can see is darkness. And we said, tell us what's in the room. You would have no idea. Does that mean that the chairs are not here and that you're not sat there? No, it means that you can't see it. It would take us to turn the light on to, for you to understand that the whole time this was all here. And that's exactly the same in the kingdom of God. That is exactly the same with the power of the Holy Spirit. It's because in our minds you can never see it. But when you encounter the presence of God, when you come under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you'll realize that what God says has been there the whole time. You just couldn't see it. You need a fresh revelation. We need the scales to fall from our eyes. That in this hour we realize God is saying, go, advance, move. It's time. Somebody give God a mighty shout of praise. Tonight I'm going to declare to some strongholds. I don't know how much time I have left. We're going to declare to some of the things that have come against your family. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. I don't have time. But God in the tabernacle, there was the outer court, there was the inner court, and there was the Holy of Holies. In the outer court, it was natural daylight, and that's where many of us want to live. But you see, God says, you're not made to live in the outer court. 
That's the same light that everybody else has. But for them to go deeper, they had to go into the inner court where there was the showbread. In other words, they had to make covenant with God. And this is the place that the Western church really don't want to go. Because covenant demands that you take up your cross. Covenant demands that you're not comfortable. Covenant demands that sometimes you're going to have to go when you don't see how it's going to work. But for those that were willing to step into covenant, the priest would go into the realm of the Holy of Holies. You see, through the blood, you have access into the Holy of Holies. Moses said, oh, glory. <laughs> Moses stepped into that glory and when the people looked at him they couldn't even look at his face the power and the glory of God was so strong and yet Paul writes that we have a greater covenant we have a greater glory a greater light a greater revelation than even Moses had I don't know about you but I'm ready to take some territory Oh, this is about to get scary for some people. I said, I'm ready to take some territory. I'm ready to go right into the devil's backyard and begin to declare the Lord is my light. I'm taking it back in Jesus' mighty name. I'm taking it back. Even though we go through storms, even though we go through trials, we can declare tonight, no matter what is happening, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And when you get that revelation, you can declare like David, whom shall I fear? If one thing I've seen in the body of Christ over these months is fear. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm neither a doctor. I don't know. Vaccination. I ain't, do you think I'm going to get into that political argument? That argument should not be in the house of God. I'm not political. But what I am going to tell you is this. Whatever you believe, that should not bring you into fear. In my home nation, by the way, I am now Amer an American citizen, so you, you can't get rid of me. You're stuck with me. But in my home nation, and I think in parts of America, they were saying, the government was saying to the church, listen, you can gather, but you can't sing. I nearly, I nearly fell out of my seat. I had one of those moments where I felt the, the anger, the righteous anger begin to bubble up. Because I thought of those apostles. I thought of the Chinese underground church. I thought of men that were willing to die. And if the government would have said, you can't sing, they'd have said, you try and stop us. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall I fear? I'm not preaching about not having wisdom. I'm preaching about that spirit of God that is rising up and saying, now it's time. Go. Even while you can't see it, go. Just obey. It's time. Because I'm telling you right now, the enemy tried not just to lock down the nations. He tried to lock down the church. He tried to do the church so much damage. But the devil is a liar. The word of God cannot be chained. If you believe it give God a mighty shout of praise we want to thank you for watching if you want to know more about shake the nation's ministries and our YouTube channel why don't you click the subscribe button also if you want notifications of our brand new videos why don't you click the bell there's so much more in shake the nation's ministries that you can get involved in why don't you click also the link to our website to find out more
To find out more about our humanitarian arm, Hope of All Nations, make sure you click the Hope of All Nations button where you can learn about us taking the gospel to thousands of children around the world and our work in the ground of the nation of Honduras. We can't wait to see you next time.